Hey guys, this is Moppin' Dude from Party Down South too. Thanks for listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And today's episode is brought to you by Gamefly. Sign up for a premium free 30-day trial at GameflyOffer.com slash torch. So, Elaine, you ready to talk a little Big Brother? Oh, I'm always ready to talk about Big Brother. Well, before we talk about Big Brother, I want to surprise you with a little thing I want to talk about. Have you seen the previews for this new Kevin Spacey movie where he turns into a cat? No. This is – I can't believe this is a real movie. It's called Nine Lives. <laughs> And it's like Kevin Spacey is a father, and he doesn't he's too busy into the into the business aspect of life and doesn't pay attention to his kids. So Christopher Walken turns him into a cat or something to teach him a lesson. I don't know. You have, when we're done here, I want you to look at this trailer. I feel like only Christopher Walken could be turning somebody into a cat. But what does Kevin Spacey what did, what did he do? Does he need money that bad? He's in House of Cards. I know. Like, if if you watch this, you would think this was like a Saturday Night Live parody of a movie. Really? I showed it to to Ron. He'll know what I'm talking about, but just I want I wanted to see if you'd see. Yeah, that. you Go did watch the it. Twitter. You put it on Twitter. It was yeah, great. yeah, yeah. It's it's insanity, but I just wanted to say that very briefly to all of our listeners. But onto what you really want to hear, Big Brother. So this was a, a fun week, an interesting week. Uh, Victor went home at the end of last surprise, week. Surprise, surprise, puppy. We surprise. all know it's gonna happen. You know, he cried when Jose left. And now he gets to compete against him in that weird competition they're going to do. I looked it up, actually. They're going to be having the competition between the five people that get kicked out on a special Friday episode on July 22nd. July 22nd. And how many of them will have been kicked out by then? It'll be after the fifth person is kicked out. So the fifth, fifth person will probably leave that Thursday and then that Friday. they have. And it's interesting because I thought they were going to be having them like, okay, one week they go against each other and then the next week they go against. But it seems like they're going to have like all five just – you know, one after yeah, one. Yeah, it's not one, like so... the Top Chef where they have to compete every week to get back in. It's just going to yeah. be Glenn, Jose, Victor, potentially Tiffany, and then whoever gets or, evicted le- next week. Any of these people, you know, or Paul or or whatever. I or personally Bronte. think it's going to be Tiffany, but. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping not, not quite yet. Not that I have any love for her, but I want to get rid of some other people first. So if Glenn was going to come back in the house, he would have to win five in a row where whoever the fifth person co- came out, they would only have to win one in a row. So depending on if it tires you out or if it you know, fatigues you at all, the last person to get kicked out has the best odds of getting back in the house. Yeah, it's really tough though, but I think production can always sway it the way they want it to go. Obviously, it'll be like, oh um, – you know, this if this is a cheerleading competition and Natalie gets kicked out, yeah, oh, she, she wins. What a surprise! Or you know, bring they, in they... the dogs and the cats because Glenn's the, uh, isn't he a vet? A vet no, he's, tech. Some, he's a former cop. I forget what he does right now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, after Victor went home, Bridget won head of household. And I can't even get a read on her. She's a, she's this cute little fidget who doesn't really want to rock the boat. You know, she doesn't want to get controlled people mad now by Frank. So where did that come from? I haven't been watching as much of the feeds in After what? Dark this season quite yet. Well, I've been had a busy thing going on, oh. a busy day going, busy life. Apparently, so, they have like a real thing, not just a kind of game thing, but I think they have some sort of romantic thing going on now. See, I couldn't tell whether it was just friendship or whether. Well, it was they've been touching. Thing. I've been told they've been touching. Like touching, touching, touching or touching. touching. In some like, of the live feeds, a little rubbing, a little this and that. Very close. Very heavy, close. heavy petting is, is some but of doesn't the he have a girlfriend? Stuff. Like, in the beginning, he said that, oh, I can just see the eyes on me from far away. Like, I know she's watching me. I don't know. I really don't know about Paul. I mean, excuse me, about Frank. And we'll talk about a little later on. Paul, uh, Frank, they're all the same. <laughs> well, I don't like Paul either. So that's, you know, that sticks out in my mind, that bearded freak. Um, <laughs> speaking of Paul, he and Tiffany are nominated and, you know, Paul is Paul. Paul. I, I mean, like he, Paul. I, I understand Paul. I what? Paul. You like Paul? I think he adds a really good element to the show. If I, we lose the him. The douchebag element? <laughs> no, I think he's infiltrated people so much and created these relationships that I don't he think. Infiltrated who? What? Do you, what? He's so, his social game is so on point. If you look at Tiffany, whenever she gets put up on the block or somebody says something negative about her, she just curls up into a ball. She puts her little hoodie on and just starts crying. Paul there actually a little dance video with her in it, by the way, with with her Nicole and that. Zakia. Yeah, that was kind of that was weak. <laughs> so what were you saying about Paul? I'm sorry, I, I, I cut like you off. Paul. I'm I'm a huge fan of Paul. 
You can be on. I thought you were on Paul Lee's side. You texted me. You're like, oh, Ron's pissed. I'm in love with Paul Lee. I totally am. I totally. Am. That's a different thing, though. I'm kind of rooting for Paul because he was. He came in as the underdog. He aligned with people who are just not the right people. And now, so this question, like, who do you like better, Paulie? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm totally sidetracking. Who do you like better, Paulie or uh, or the, the cowboy there, the beast mode cowboy, Polly. Caleb? Because because beast mode's married now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Enough of this, Paul. Love you. Yeah, I can't handle. It. I'm going to throw up. So, <laughs> on Sunday's episode, we saw this big thing go down between Frank and Devon. What do you make of this whole situation? Awkward. I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Like Frank was like smacking her butt and saying crap to her. But if I, I was in the house with Frank, you know me, I'd be dropping C bombs and I would be calling people sluts all day. Um, so I don't you, know if I'd necessarily, life, right? yeah, I don't know if I'd necessarily be touching their butts, but I think you know Frank. If I would be on that level with Frank, I don't think Devon is quite there. Yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of Frank, but I don't think there's anything malicious about what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, look, these people are, like, cuddling in bed. Everybody is with each other constantly and doing stuff. So when you're living with people for that long, you just kind of – maybe you thought you were looking. So, I, so Frank, you know, he shouldn't have done it because he doesn't have the relationship with Devon, but I don't think it's like, oh, he's a bad dude. No, and his apology just, was heartfelt. Yeah, and Devon was like, oh, yeah, it's okay. I I'm still want him out. Yeah, it's like, jeez. Whatever. I mean, I want him out too, but uh, you know, I'm not going to go and demonize Frank over this quite yet. He he realized he was out of line. He said he was sorry. You know, we'll see how it goes next. And then Frank uh, comes back again and wins the the road kill, and he puts up Bronte. You know, I'm no fan of Bronte in some of the things she said. I disagree with those things, but I kind of feel bad for her a little bit. It's going to be rough her to just boy. realize how badly your game, no, how bad your game is going. Like she's screwed. She's just on the wrong side of the numbers. You know, She's something could been have on happened. the wrong side. She will always be yeah. on the wrong side. Yeah, I mean, they they tried to stick to that newbies alliance to begin with. It just broke down immediately when the uh, when the eight pack was formed. So Bronte is kind of screwed. But that's the problem with Big Brother. It's like if you start out aligning with the wrong people, it can just throw your game into a tailspin right from the start, and then you start finding yourself up on the block, and people don't want to get blood on their hands, so you end up being this recurring character on the block. It's really just. I mean, luck sometimes. Do you go to the group that's going to be the winning group or not? It's and not about luck. It's about good people aligning with good people and not so great people aligning with not so great people. Yeah, but just say in the eight pack, if one of those people just happened to be downstairs and Bronte happened to be upstairs, she may be part of the eight pack right now. It just happened to be. Yeah, but we saw what happened with the eight pack, so that doesn't even matter. Yeah, it's it's. The eight pack is around, but it's not going to last in its current form forever. No. I don't think not, not very long. But as long as our boy James is is safe, that's all I'm, all that matters. And you know, James, James and, and Natalie. No, 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 James and Natalie. I want them to stay in the house because I want to see if James is going to get some action. Are they going to bang? I need my friend to to stop with all the female stuff. I get it. He <laughs> likes her, but he's got to stop for his game. He needs to go far in this game, and he's not going to if he's just in bed with her all day. This is what I'm saying, James. If it works out, hook me up with some of her cheerleader friends. <laughs> you know, well, she was a Jets cheerleader, so she's in like the tri-state area, like I love me. It. So oh it's, my god! It's not, but uh, you know, they they were really playing up the whole thing in the last episode about how they were kind of flirt with each other and calling each other. And from what I've read online, she's been telling people like you know, like when he's like in a non-game way, like oh yeah, I definitely date him outside the house. So. But didn't know. Frank come out and tell Nicole, this is what I heard, that Frank came out and told Nicole that Natalie didn't really like James and they were wondering if they had to intervene and tell well, who James. Knows? Tiffany's too busy flirting and playing kissy face with Corey there, the guy who's saying God knows what on Twitter. So, you know, all of these returning players, they all take a big game and they go. I think Davon is probably the only one. Wait, Tiffany's who trying is... to play kissy games with who? No, no, or Nicole's Nicole. playing kissy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Nicole's playing kissy face with Corey. Yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know. You know I'm not sure there's too much going on upstairs with Corey, but I mean, maybe that's just the way production's perceiving it. No, I, I agree with it. I mean, I mean he's, a, he's a handsome mofo, but I don't think he's. Uh, win any awards. He's like John from Survivor a couple years ago. John, not the rocket scientist. Uh, Corey's not a rocket <laughs> scientist either. 
I might say he's a dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will think leave you with this. Rock scientist and dum dum. There's a huge range in between there. <laughs> there might be, but I was looking uh, at some of the videos online from the last episode, and I love when Natalie goes. You know, he just makes me feel really good. I want to make him feel good too. I'm like, yeah, you, yeah, you do. I need you back on the live feeds. Get your head back in the game. Start watching Frank sexually harassing all the chicks in the house. <laughs> There's so much to talk about, and you're just not able to talk about it because you're not in the live feeds. Maybe, maybe, maybe James will like impregnate Natalie and be like, Frank. Now you're stuck with me for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Not funny. Look. That was crazy. That was over the top. No, James would never do that. <laughs> well, I, well, I wish him luck. So uh, onto the challenge. Uh, one of the big things in the beginning of this episode was the pact that was made to vote out either banana, Bananas or Vince. It looked like we had Wes and Nani. I didn't say Nani this time. Wes and Nani. Good job. Uh, yeah. Devin and Cheyenne, Dario and Nicole, and possibly Corey and Smashley. You know, they all seem to be kind of in on it. Uh, you had Nani and Nicole because, you know, they're related. We have Wes and Devin because they're, they're friends. So that kind of made a, a four-group team there that I think was pretty strong with each yeah, other. Yeah, it was, right? <laughs> or so we thought. Yeah. Uh, so, and then Tej comes out of the blue and just goes, yeah, I'm going to kidnap your chicks, basically. Oh, my Takes God. Takes them away. Turns out they were buried in oh. coffins under the So I would the... never be able to do this. My biggest fear in life, it, I'm claustrophobic. I used to live in France, as you know, and they have something there called the catacombs. Catacombs? Have you ever been there? No, the catacombs. No, I have not been. To... Oh, I've been to Paris, but I've never been to the catacombs. No. Well, there, I don't even know how many feet under the ground, like 20 or 30 feet. And it's just a big pile of bones. and a little... They turned it into some museum down there, and I went walked down there and got so claustrophobic that I ran back out 20, 30 feet up above the ground. And I said, I can't even do it. I'm mentally freaked out. So I don't understand how in the challenge these girls are being buried alive. Did you celebrate Bastille Day while you were there? <laughs> Sorry, these are just some French things. I know. Yeah, so the girls were buried underground. And TJ basically said, I asked them some questions. And now I'm asking you the same questions. If you answer the same question correctly... Then you can move forward, and after you get a number of steps forward, you can then dig them out, and then the first person to dig them out, and then ring a bell wins, yada, yada, yada. And it just shows how many of these partnerships like, don't know each other at no. all. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're rivals, so why would they really know each other? Because you're, What else is there to do? There's not like a TV to watch in the house. You just work yeah, out. These are all you stupid kill bugs. questions. Like, who do you think is the creepiest guy in the house? Actually, a lot of people got that right because they said Vince. Vince is the creepiest guy in the house. Is That's, he? Uh, why is he creepy? I don't know. Just look at him. He's like a wannabe bananas. Yeah, it doesn't make him creepy. Well, then you can go marry him. It's good for you. Sorry, Ron. You're going to marry it's creepy. It's kind of weird. I did have a dream about him, which is just really bizarre. Cut, cut it off. I don't want to hear this. I'm so disturbed. Just thinking <laughs> what might have been happening in this dream? So, <laughs> Nate and Christina, though, they're either stupid or they don't know each other. I'm, I think it may be both, to be honest with you. Nate's too busy flirting with Nicole and not learning A little bit about. of both, yeah. So, Dario and Nicole win, which is great for Team West, right? It should be. But it was not. Uh, it turns out that Dario's a dumb dumb. He uh, was persuaded by Bananas, got mad that Corey kind of had to deal with both sides, and decided to throw either Corey and Ashley or Devin and Cheyenne and face Nate and Christina, totally screwing over Wes and totally getting rid of an opportunity to put both Vinny and and Bananas in there. It's, I, I feel like I you're it, like, like yeah, I want to come in third. Like, who, com who says that about their life? Like, yeah, I'm okay with being second place or third or fourth behind I mean, bananas i've heard another podcast bananas must be like a fun person to hang out with or maybe he has some power behind the scenes a lot of sway yeah why would you not get rid of johnny bananas immediately immediately because they all should have done it they should have just, just kept putting him in until somebody beat him I mean, honestly, the guy's in good shape. I'll give him that. But he's getting older. And the reason that he sticks around so long is because people are either afraid of him or don't put it. It's it's stupid. Just get rid of the dude. Totally agree. Yeah, well. So, sorry. Sorry, Wes. You could still win. But it's not looking good for, for, for Team Wes quite, quite at this moment. So, uh, are you the one last night? You said you didn't have a chance to watch it, huh? I didn't. But we have a friend, of, have... new friend of the podcast. Oh, he's he's in big trouble, by the way. Why? Um, so, so Asaf, 
um, <laughs> at the end of last episode, he was um, all about Tori, who, who is actually my favorite girl on the show. I think I, I want to date her the most out of beautiful, all of them. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you know, um, he's like, oh, yes, yeah, I love you. You're a pretty girl. You're, you're whatever. The, I can't do an Israeli, Israeli accent. I can't. You Israeli be able accent. To. <laughs> like, I was raised Jewish. I can speak Israeli or I speak Hebrew or whatever. I don't speak um, so, Jewish. I don't speak Mexican. <laughs> speak. Yeah, sorry. You know, I, I should be able to know what is what. Love Anyways, um, so Asaf is like, you know what? I'm all about Tori. And then Francesca, 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 I can't even say her name, Francesca. is like, well, you know, maybe she's just like make out with me. She just makes out with him. He brings her up to the boom boom room, gives it to her good. And the second he's done, he's like, oh, that was that was a mistake. So now it's he's all about the boom boom room. Yeah, he was. It's like one of those. It's it's really actually how men work. I, I kind of don't blame him. That like he's all about banging her, and the second he's done, he's like, oh, that wasn't smart. <laughs> so now he has to come down and tell Tori what just happened, but he doesn't tell her till they go on their date because they won the competition. So while they're out in the day, he's like, yeah, I slept with her, and and Tori's like losing her mind. Like we better not be. What is wrong with you? You said you like me. We better not be a match. Blah, like just losing her mind. And while this is happening, everybody back home doesn't know this is happening. And he's like, we're going to send Asaf and Tori into the truth booth because obviously they're a match and they're so happy together. Yeah. So it, it, it was not good. Were they a match? Uh, they were not a match, and, which Thank Tori was very happy. And I, I will tell you this about Asaf, though. I will admit he, he told the truth. Okay, he told them what happened. He didn't try to hide it. He's basically like, I was a jerk off. Like I'm an idiot. You sh you deserve better than me. He was like those papers though. <laughs> you know he was he was on um. So you think you can dance? Was he really? I googled that and that came up. I'm like oh okay, I didn't know that. He still so then the I papers. So I saw him on uh, Periscope afterwards too, and he was saying oh there's more. He, I was trying to get him on the podcast. I didn't think he knew what I was talking about though. He's like podcast what? What is a podcast? <laughs> He's asking me but, interview. But he said there was a lot of stuff in this show that you didn't see, which, you know, surprise, surprise, it's reality TV. And he said that uh, Tori was sleeping in some other dude's bed every night. Not, not that she was sleeping oh. with not that, not that they were having sex, but, you know, they were probably making out and That's stuff. So, like, he got, so he got a little jealous. Like, you know, there's, there's a little stuff going back and forth, I guess. Um, well, the other let's big ask thing... him if he wants to come on our inter and so we can interview him. Because a lot of people don't know what a podcast is. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll actually text. You know, I guess Periscope isn't the best way to ask. I should send him the text. Um, <laughs> The other big story of this episode was that Gio and our girl Caitlin are kaput for the moment, at least. Oh wow! Gio was flirt Gio was flirting with Julia, uh, you know, who's men already love been, Julia. Uh, do you like Julia as much she, as the men do? I mean, she's okay, but I I don't know if I'd like go Gaga They're over her. With... He was just talking like, oh yeah, you know, uh, I got this giant hammer, and I'm gonna plop it out on the table, <laughs> and and. Just, in my in my experience, guys have to talk about that a lot. Are probably the people who are the most insecure about things. You know, why do you, why are you telling people about? You know, you, you'll find out soon enough if you play your cards right. So this obviously yeah. pissed off Kaylin. She's like, you know, you, you you were talking about how you were going to marry me like two weeks ago, and now you're trying to bang Julia. I so can't then, believe that he was professing his love too. So, so when you really flirt with some in somebody in front of someone who cares for you, what's the best way to make it up to them? Punch him or go and find somebody else. Yeah, um, Gio's like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry. Let's go bang. Brings her up to the boom boom room. And, <laughs> you and love the Kaylin... boom boom room. I found the boom boom room in Austin, by the way. I saw, I saw ASAP like that. Um, but they got up there, and Kaylin just wasn't really feeling. She wanted to talk. She didn't want to play games, and she started to cry because she'd been, you know, hurt before and stuff. And Gio was basically like, "This is too much. I can't deal with talking and like feelings <laughs> and stuff. I just want to bang you." And, <laughs> and he's out. And he's out. I, I don't get it. That is funny. What do you mean he's out? He's like, yeah, I, th I think maybe we, you know, I, I maybe we should go s for other people. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's what happens after you bang, though, right? They didn't bang, though. He wanted to bang her, and she didn't put out, and I guess that made her mad. Yeah, but it's <laughs> it's like once you get to that point, you either do it or you don't. But it, chances are, it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna be making that decision if you want to move forward, and it's gonna be Speaking over, or you're gonna be together. We had Kaylin on here too. She was she was gonna get back to us and talk to us and really? haven't heard back. I I sent her a message again the other day. I haven't heard from her. Did hear from uh did hear from our girl Kayla though. She's doing pretty well. I'm glad Living life. she deserves yeah. it. Definitely. So before we want to talk about Gamefly a little more, um I, mean, I see nah, I don't want to be a gender stereotype, but you're a girl. Did you play video games when you were a kid? Yeah, of course. 
what games did you play? What were your favorite? Like Mario Brothers or something? Yeah, yeah. Super Mario Kart. Of do, 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 all that stuff. Didn't, so, didn't play I, with Pokemon, but this whole cr- Pokemon craze is out now. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, but that aside, I like playing video games, but as I've mentioned before, I'm not very good at them. I play for a while. I hit a wall that I can't beat a level or whatever, and, and that's that game over. And I don't want to spend like 40 or $50 on a video game that I just stop playing a quarter of the way through, which is why I love Gamefly. They have over 80,000. 80, that's a lot of games. They have over 8,000 new releases and classics available to rent uh, for all the systems, You know, whether it's Xbox, Xbox One, PlayStation, whatever, Super Nintendo, all those old stuff. And you just pick the game you want. They mail it to you, and then you mail it back when it's done. I mean... You can't get better than that. If you like it, you can keep it at a discounted price. They even have Blu-rays and DVDs. That sounds you know? amazing. Yeah, I mean, if you love video games I do. and don't want to, and who wants to buy like maybe two or three video games a year when you can play, you know, like twenty a year at a low, low price? Yeah. So if you head on over to GameFlyOffer.com/torch, you can get a premium free thirty-day free trial. Uh, you're gonna thank me, I swear to God. Just do it. Gameflyoffer.com slash torch for your free for your free premium 30 day trial. Booyah. So we're gonna end here with a couple of shows that uh, I don't have as much to say as some of the other ones. Um below deck, this week we or last week, I guess it would be at this point, uh we had some guests on there that were kind of annoying. They, they kind rude. of clashed with people. But here's what I want to say. If you're paying what they're paying. And you're leaving the tip they're leaving. You can be as rude as you want. These, I think the these service. Is, yeah, are, you're right. You're right. The service does not stand up to the amount they're paying. No, these people are too busy screwing around or getting sick or flirting with them or being on TV. It's like you know what? Your life isn't that hard, uh, basically to everybody. Well, and then you have Ben a, said they pay two hundred thousand dollars to be on the on the ship for those whatever days, and then they tip about twenty fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. So if I want a grilled cheese sandwich, Ben, shut the hell up and make me a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> I'm, I'm paying the money here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need the commentary from the peanut gallery. So, it. yes, you know, they weren't If the I want a side. quesadilla and I want to call it a quesadilla, quesadilla. God, at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., you better damn well give it to me, Ben. Yeah. Wake your butt up. You're getting basically $2,000 in tip money for, like, three days' work. Shut up. We love the cast anyways. I don't want to be like we're bashing on them and stuff. Danny Danny, Danny will forever be the worst. Um, this week he forfeited his tip money because he was you know, he was sick. He had that 120,000 degree temperature. He got off the boat. And when he came back, Ben was basically, you know, I'm, like, I'm already yawning at Danny. Sorry. <laughs> what the hell? That, I don't know is, if I really believe. We're all professionals here. I don't know we're if I actually professionals. believe that he was sick, but. Well, they took his temperature and they said he was sick. I don't know. Uh, but but Ben was like, you know what? If you want to be, if you want to get some goodwill, maybe you forfeit the tip because you weren't here to earn it. That was and so good he advice. Does. And, and then it was the biggest tip of the year. And I don't know if it earned him any goodwill because I think Bobby and Hannah just like hate the dude straight up. Do you think that they got a huge tip because Danny wasn't involved with it? Are we talking about Geo's hammer here? Big tip? What? No. <laughs> I don't even believe the tip thing is like really from these guests. I think it's I think it's from Bravo to be honest with you. Because if you watch the show in past seasons of the original series, whenever it's a group they think are going to be the worst or going to be like a bad tip, they always tip the worst. Like remember, like a group of like older yeah. ladies came a couple years ago and they're like basically making fun of them and bashing them the entire time, and then left the best tip of the season. It it seems to happen too often for it to just be random. Maybe the guests just don't know all the trash that the crew is actually talking about them. So when they you get the tip, they're, they're just surprised. You'd think if you've watched the show before, though, you maybe would. Like, wouldn't you just if, – if you won the lottery tomorrow, you won Powerball tomorrow. I will. You won Mega tomorrow, yes. Would you spend $200,000 to go on this TV show and have people talk trash about you the entire time? Or would you just go on a different charter and just have no I cameras? I might go on a different show where I actually yeah. own the network. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I know I'm going on vacation uh, in a day or so, but we still got to have Bobby on or Hannah. Hannah's people haven't gotten back to us yet. She said she was going to come on the show and told me to contact She's her. Excited her about people. It. I'm excited for her. Yeah, she, she got back to us really quick. Was awesome. So we had to just get. You know, we've had these buns in the oven. That's not the right terminology. We've had these wheels in motion for a while. We just got buns in the oven. Coming. Who's pregnant? <laughs> Hey oh. Um the season's gonna be coming to an end pretty soon. So we gotta make sure we get this mm-hmm. done. I actually told a friend of mine, um, he listened to our podcast a lot. I used to play kickball with him, Robbie Freeman. Uh he was he was saying, 
now the show I'm in love with these days is Below Deck Mediterranean. I'm like, <laughs> well, let me tell you who we may have on our show. <laughs> he was really excited. He's like, oh, wow. that's awesome. It's crazy. <laughs> love it. Yeah, so, so uh, don't disappoint, yeah. Hannah. <laughs> don't do it. Um, the last show I want to talk about today is The Bachelorette. And I got to tell you, I am out of this show. I'm so bored with it. Chad left, and I, oh god, like I, I fast forward through most of the show last night. I'll be honest, I did not watch most of the show because I just didn't care. Did you watch it? I fell asleep right at the <laughs> end when they were making the decision. Here are some of the uh, quick hits here. So we had Alex. Dressed up like a gaucho or whatever the hell that is. I, I I wanted to know what that was, but I just fast forward. Yeah, I didn't care enough. And she made out with him a little bit and then sent his ass packing because he was like, Oh, you know, I, I'm really falling in love with you and I see myself falling in love with you and she's like, Let me stop you. I'm uh I'm not as excited as I should be, so like get it the hell out of here. It's basically what she said. You know, she said it much nicer than that. And that was basically it. Yeah. You and never, you you never want to be obviously stopped. We knew, but obviously we knew that that wasn't gonna work out. Here are the final two. It's going to be, uh, I was going to say Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be Jordan Rodgers, <laughs> and it's going to be Luke. There's no Aaron and, Rodgers. No, yeah, we found out that, you know, so Aaron Rodgers, yeah, he's big and rich. He's, he's dating celebrities. He's but, man, he's being thrown to the bus on this rich. episode. He's big and rich. Well, he's a football player. He's making lots of money. What do you mean? Yeah. He's a Super Bowl winner. He's an MVP winner. But, but his brother is throwing Jordan, him under the bus. But, and Jordan, yeah, but Jordan said that he didn't like the way he was living his life. And basically Aaron Rodgers doesn't really interact or talk with the family. You know, George was like, you know, I say, I chose to stay by my family and he didn't. It's like, well, George, because you couldn't make a pro team. You know, you're on the practice squad all the time. If he was on like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he wouldn't be home either. He'd be playing football all the time. So he's, he's kind of like, I think, throwing some shade, basically saying like, I was never good enough. You know, yeah. like, I, I, I got no place else good. to go. I don't know. Yeah, you, you can look at it either way. But I think even if you're that big, you can s still have time for your family. You're still talking about Geo here? Hey oh No, sorry. Um, I don't know. <laughs> about about Jordan. So who do you think is going to, and again, we don't know this for sure, but who do you think is going to win and who's going to be the bachelor? I'm torn that having Aaron Rodgers' brother, Jordan, as the bachelor would be good, but, you know, Luke, I, I don't know. Do you like Luke? Do you th is he a handsome man to you? I don't see her forever person in any of these guys, but I think no. – Jordan will have to do something or something will have to happen like right before the end for do Jordan. her. Well, yeah, no, like for Jordan to be out and then for them to consider him as the bachelor. Cause I think he would be a great bachelor. I just don't think that I don't think she's the one for him. She'll probably end up picking Luke. And then you get Jordan on there. Then you wear down Aaron Rodgers and you have him come on the show next year. It's like this big record. <laughs> you wear him yeah, down. Whole thing. You tweet, him, you tweet him enough times. <laughs> Do it. So basically, what you fell asleep and missed was that James Taylor left. Who cares? I mean, there was a whole other th <laughs> you know, three-on-one date. I don't care. Like, I, I just didn't care. I'm like, I whatever. Some guys, the, James Taylor's shoving french fries in his mouth. Robbie's running around naked. That was They're a all great date, by the way. I love that. I just didn't care. Like, I felt bad. You know, Luke went on a date. I didn't care. I, I feel bad because I'm supposed to watch for this podcast. I'm, like, I'm just so bored. Yeah, but the Screw date this. when it rained was probably one of the best dates they've ever had on The Bachelor. I thought it was so entertaining. Him running down, Bobby running down the hall naked. Well, Bobby might have a chance, actually. No, nah, I think he'll come in third. Maybe not, though. He, see. He, It'll he, be he Bobby, Luke, and... Jordan that'll really be the ones that she considers and then the other guy who looks like Jordan he doesn't have a chance in hell because he doesn't really have that much of a personality yeah, who cares about him uh, I don't even know his name yeah it means the C I forget like Colin or Colin some, some crap like that who cares yeah, we, we don't care um, <laughs> alright so before we go I just want to mention <laughs> two shows that are the big starting or, no I don't know. The Big C was a TV show, you know, and it's been off the air for quite a while. Uh, two shows that are out or that are going to be coming out, I think people should watch. I'm just going to say their names quickly. The Night Of, it's on HBO. It's very, very, very good. The season premiere was last week, although it had been on demand for a while. It's an eight-week eight uh, miniseries. Watch it. It's it's premiere. It's 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 great television. That's all I can say. There's, there's nothing else to say. And the other is Mr. Robot is coming back tomorrow on USA on Wednesday. Um and if you watch the first season, it got a lot of critical acclaim. I liked it. I, I hated the first episode, but then got sucked in. So, yeah. 
So that's that. Uh, remember, you I go to our website. I definitely will w- check it out. Great, great. So remember, go to our website, www.bringmeyourtorch.com. But where else can you go? Facebook.com slash bringmeyourtorch or Twitter.com slash bringmeyourtorch without the H. No H. Find us on iHeartRadio iHeartRadio. You can find us on iTunes. You can give us five stars. Write a wonderful review about how wonderful we are. You can find us on Stitcher, on YouTube, on Blueberry. Anywhere. Google, bring me your torch. Yeah, I mean, we're that popular. You can find us anywhere you want to find us. <laughs> we're kind of a big deal. Next time I talk to you, I'll be talking to you from a beach somewhere in Mexico. So uh, I hope you can uh, survive without me for a couple of days. And uh, I hope anybody who lives in Connecticut and is listening to this, please don't rob my house because you know I'm not going to be home now. <laughs> We'll put your GPS at coordinates no. out there for people. As long as you don't rob me, just remember you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time and bring me your torch. Bye. Bye.